Hi, so today I'm going to be doing a video on an 820-2936 board. It has a description written on here in marker. It says, powers up, no post. So post is power on self-test. It's when, okay, the computer turns on, but does it actually do anything after that? Does it initialize? So, you know, when you will turn on a computer with an ASUS motherboard and you see ASUS pop up with a little logo and hit F2 for setup or F8 for boot options, all that stuff, that's post. Or when you see that it's testing memory and all that kind of stuff. So this machine turns on and has a green light, but it says that it doesn't post. So one of the first things that I want to see is, is, the, is the CPU actually turning on for it to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this glass cleaner over here so that you can see what my multimeter looks like. I finally get, I, It's a pain in the ass for people to have the camera over there, but it makes doing the videos a lot easier when you can actually see stuff. So I decided to, to move it over there. And I kind of like how stuff comes out a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the, uh, I'm going to open the board view for this model motherboard. So this is an 820-2936. Let me open the board view, and I'm also going to switch over to the view in the camera that allows you to see my board view. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is look for vCore. So ppvcore underscore so underscore cpu, and it shows me all the places at which I can see vCore. So when I decide that I want to see what power I get for CPU vCore, I'm going to turn my multimeter to voltage mode. I'm going to take the black probe and put it on ground. I'm going to take the red probe and I'm going to put it where CPU vCore is supposed to be, and I get 0, 0.000 volts. Let's check it another place. 0, 0.000 volts. So what I'm going to want to do now is I'm going to want to check and see what is responsible for CPU vCore. So if I want to check what's responsible for CPU vCore, I'm going to scroll through my schematic over here. So let's go back to a view that allows you to see the screen here so that you can see what it is I'm looking at. So this is an 820-2936 schematic here. So let's just see where CPU vCore is. I'm going to go to the first page where it's going to describe where everything is to me. All right, so this is pretty much like a power diagram. So AC adapter in, power... This is the battery charging chip, this is the PCH, this is 5 volts, this is memory, and here we go, PPVCore underscore SO underscore CPU. I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can actually see what that says. Let me just make sure Open Broadcaster is still recording. Excellent, it is. I don't trust it. Check again. It decided the last video I did to just stop recording for no reason, so. All right, so U7400, so I look for U7400. And I'm going to find the page. It is this page. And then I'm going to go over here on my board view. Look for LU7400. And I hope to God that my camera is working since I haven't checked it uh, since my last video failure. So that's U7400 right there. Okay, still recording. Awesome. And let's check what it looks like on the microscope camera. So we're going to go over to the microscope camera right now. And we're going to go over to where U7400 is on the board. And when I look at the U7400 area of the board, it looks like cock and balls. So there you go. That's here we go. I love this guy. I, I should got to start using this in every video, the little auto adjust feature. All right. So this is the SPI ROM chip. And right above it is capacitors that look like cock and balls. And more capacitors that look like cock and balls. And my buck regulator controller for CPU vCore. That's U7400. And what does it look like but cock and balls? So let's see. Let's, yeah, let's get a good look at this. So we can see just how fucked it is, and that's not the nicest thing in the world, but I can live with it. It honestly, here's the thing, and I know that you, there's no way for you guys to believe this, but when you look at this, like when you look at this little area over here, without the microscope, it looks disgusting, but under the microscope, it looks fine. Like, see that? In the microscope, it looks good, but you would have to be sitting here. You have to be sitting where I'm sitting to look at that and see that that looks like complete shit. Like this pin over here. And again, in the microscope, you cannot see that that looks bad. And that's leading right to this resistor, which, again, I would bet my balls from the way this looks over here that it's blown. So you can see that this looks bad and is blown. But this doesn't look bad at all. And again, when I look at it from here, my first impression before even getting a microscope is, wow, I would replace that chip because this pin over here looks so bad. But it looks fine under the microscope, which really sucks because I, wanted, I want you to see what I see. I want you to see that that looks like shit. So let's see if I lower the light a little bit. Maybe the light is allowing it to reflect and doing that. I'm going to lower the light more to the lowest level. Get this to adjust and see. Yeah, same thing. Hmm. That sucks because I want you to be able to see what I see. I want you to be able to troubleshoot the same way I troubleshoot. And when I troubleshoot this, that area looks really nasty instantly. And I want you to kind of learn the way, you know, how I troubleshoot. But I guess that's not happening in this video. Oh, well. 
Okay, well, let's see what that little resistor over there is for. So let's switch back to a view that allows you to see the screen. So we're going to switch back to that view, and we're going to see what that resistor is. So that's this resistor over here, and down here in the board view, it says that's R7402. If you want to know what program this is, how about you read and put this in full screen and Google this over here. Again, this big, big thing, big question. What program is that? What program is that? Well, am, I, am I hiding it? Like, really? But I digress. That's a rant for, actually, I've already done that rant in another video, so no need to do it again here. R7402, what does R, R7402 do? So R7402 is coming into this. So CPU IMVP ton. So what does that do? Let's Google Max17511. Wow, I forgot what I was talking about completely. It's going to be a, uh, that is embarrassing. I need to get myself some breakfast. Anyway, so before I can get breakfast, I need to finish this. So I'm going to remember what I'm talking about later, and I'll show you an example on the oscilloscope once my brain turns back on. But, wow. Okay, back to, the, back to what I was doing. So I test that resistor. I'm 99% certain that that resistor is not 90.9 kilo ohms. So I'm going to have the multimeter on there. Let's do this to make sure it's not plugged in. And that resistor is open line. So we put the soldering equipment on. Let's get a 90.9 kilo ohm resistor. Let's replace it. Let's turn the air filter on because I don't want to get fucked up from inhaling solder fumes all day. I did enough of that. And this is 150 kilo ohms, wrong one. And this is 182 kilo ohms, wrong one. This here is 90.9 kilo ohms, right one. So I have all my CPU IMVP ton resistors in one thing here because it's a very common thing to blow. So let's get heat cracking. This is a new spool too. Sick and tired of grabbing this stuff off of dead boards. Okay, so now that I have my new spool and I'm excited, I'm gonna, let's remove that piece of shit. I hate opening new spools. God damn it. Okay. Why the fuck do you have to saran wrap it this tightly? It's not a damn BGA chip. It's not like it's going to popcorn. It's a fucking resistor. Okay, here we go. Out of the packaging. Okay, I'm impatient. I don't even want to wait for the hot air. I'm excited. I'm ready to go get my food. I'm excited to go get my breakfast. My breakfast at... 7 12 p.m. Overworked, underpaid. All right, we good. Oh, and that pad looks like garbage. We can probably save it, but am I interested? Am I interested? Yeah, I'm interested because I don't want to run a wire when I'm this hungry. Okay. It's important to get food as soon as you're hungry, and I usually follow that rule except for when I'm just insanely insanely behind which taking two weeks off of work to teach a course on board repair has the tendency to do to one okay and we take the resistor and float you in a place that could have been floated a little more beautiful, but I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to turn this thing on and see what's cracking. So it didn't post. That was the stated problem, that it doesn't post. So I got myself an SSD. Now all I need to do is get an enclosure for the SSD so that I can plug it in. Let's plug a screen in here as well. And let's turn this mofo on and see what happens. This was sent in by a good friend who has a bunch of stores in... Oh, God. It's one of the Carolinas. Wow, I'm a shit... No, that, that is... I forget which one. There's two of them. There's the North Carolina and the South Carolina. Wow. My memory is junk right now. But yeah, this is a box of stuff, and let's get cracking through them. There was, I saw in this box there were a couple that were GPU, and it's something that I really need to add to the website. Like, graphics chips? No. 
Absolutely. No, 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 no. No more 2011 graphics chip jobs. Uh, let me explain why. Firstly, Apple does it for free. So if Apple does it for free, you should not pay me. Secondly, and this, this, is, a, this, is, a good, this is an important one now, uh, the graphics chips that are available for virtually any of these machines are complete and utter garbage. I mean, this, it's, they're trash, really. NVIDIA, AMD, ATI, they do not sell chipsets to people who are not Apple, Dell, Foxconn, Quanta, Compal. Like those people have arrangements where they can get new graphics chips. You, what do the small repair shops get? They get the shit that CIC and you know dumpster divers on eBay ripped off of boards. They look like this. Like here's the thing. I tell you to buy these boards from China, right? I tell you to buy stuff that looks like this uh, for your parts boards. This is where the graphics chip that you get on eBay comes from. And if, again, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, start offering it as a service. And again, just, just start giving them back to people who do graphics design or video editing. And you will see where those things come from and you will believe me. Or just start looking at them under a microscope. Like buy a spool of 30 graphics chips and just look at them. Like look at what they look like. You will see that a lot of them are used. And the ones that are not used, they're ones that were from AMD ship pile or... NVIDIA's shit pile. I mean, for example, like a lot of the laptop screens that get released, you got you to gotta think about this and you got to look at it. They have a little 9 on the side of the box. What does the 9 mean? LG's code for the different screens, you'll see A, you'll see A+, you'll see 5, you'll see 9. 9 is their crap pile. And when it comes to retina screens in particular, you'll see that every single person who's selling full crates or full boxes and original cartons, they all say 9. Because these companies are not interested in selling their good stuff to you. It's all dumpster diving. And would it be worth it to do it if there was no solution? Maybe. But when Apple is doing it for free, no, 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 no. No more graphics chips. No more going through spools to find the ones that are not bullshit. And no more fixing boards that come with bad GPUs that will guarantee die, even if you go to Apple, because they were just made like shit. So that, that part of the pile I'm going to be sending back. But this one said does not power on self-test, does not post, does not boot. And that is the little penguin that is my login for this SSD, which means I'm good. CPU IMVP underscore ton. Sets the switching frequency. Oh, I forgot. I said I was going to show you what I was talking about with the whole switching frequency thing, didn't I? And I never did. I never did, did I? Okay, let me bring over the oscilloscope, which means moving... What are you doing here? GTFO. Moving some stuff around. This can go back in the testing slot. This can go back in my fucked boards bin. You can go back in the testing slot. GTFO, GTFO. And oscilloscope. And the cord is probably going to be just long enough to reach right an inch away from it being on camera. Okay, oscilloscope. Show me some fun stuff. So let's go around the CPU, V-Core, buck regulator, controller. Let's turn this thing to where you're going to be able to see what's going on. Okay, so you have... Let's see, what do we have here? This is... Nothing. There we go. Okay, so this is the top of the buck regulator, right? So this is just straight up 12 volts. Ahem. It's hard to keep my probe in there. See that? 12 volts. Just straight 12 volts. We don't want 12 volts. 12 volts is no good for a CPU. We, 12 volts to the CPU will we'll, we'll fuck it up big time. What we want is this. We want 1 volt. See, that's 0. And when I touch it, that's 1. A very tiny little low voltage from my tiny little CPU. So how, what are we going to do to get turned 12 volts in a 1 volt? Something like this. See, I have 12 and then 0, and then 12 and then 0. That's why it's called a switching power supply. So you have 12 and then nothing, and then 12 and then nothing, and then 12 and then nothing, and then 12 and then nothing. Let's see if I can get it to... Uh, let's see if I can edit a little bit. Let's just attach the ground. 
I clipped the ground in so that I can fuck with the oscilloscope a little bit. All right. Let's fuck with the trigger. There we go. That's pretty much what you get. You have, it's even. So you have 12 up here and then a bunch of nothing. And you average out 12, uh, you know, a tiny bit of 12 and a bunch of zero, a tiny bit of 12 and a bunch of zero, a tiny bit of 12 and a bunch of zero. And what you get on the other side is, uh -uh, you get this, you know, you get 872 millivolts. And going back over here, then the switching. This over here, that is a control chip that controls this. So this is two transistors, one between the 12 volts and output, and the other between the output and ground. And what's going to happen here is you're gonna, it's going to create pulses. So this is going to open, and 12 volts is going to go through this inductor, and it's going to close. And then there's going to be nothing going through the inductor. It's going to open, and 12 volts will go through the inductor, and it'll close, and then nothing will go through the inductor. And after the inductor, what's going to happen is that's going to get get averaged out between 12, 0, 12, 0, 12, 0. It's going to get averaged out to 1. But if there's nothing to set the switching frequency, if there's nothing on that pin that's going to set the switching frequency, so on the CPU IMVP ton pin, as the data sheet said, that's going to set switching frequency. If there's no voltage there, it will never set switching frequency. Therefore, it will never switch. Therefore, it will never create power. Therefore, it won't post. So that's that. And now, time for breakfast. <laughs>